day is a form of intense pruning where we actually train a tree into a two-dimensional form. You might see this out in the open on some wires or up against a brick wall. It's a form that actually dates back to the Roman era and there's a lot of reasons why you might espalier a tree. One is for the aesthetic value. So it does add a lot of vegetation into a vertical space that might not otherwise be covered. Another way um, or reason why you might espalier something is to capture a microclimate. So a lot of times fruit trees are trained into espalier forms and so it allows you to grow fruit trees into a very narrow area and potentially capture, if it's up against a brick wall, capture that radiant heat in order to produce more fruit. Now typically fruit trees are espalier, but it is possible to do some other trees as well. We have kefir pears here, um, but the one thing if you were to use apples, apples tend to have a softer wood longer, allowing it to be more flexible in order to tie that down. When we first started this process, I'm going to come down here and look at this tree. When we first planted it, like a lot of fruit trees, we actually cut back that stem to where we wanted to establish that first cordon or that canopy to establish. Um, this is a normal practice that you do with fruit trees. And again, it can be a little scary to just cut the top of a tree off. But what that does is it initiates some of these side shoots to start growing. And we want to direct that growth outward onto our cordons. So the first year we cut that off and that season we got new growth coming out and we trimmed everything except for these two and then we trained them and tied them onto this first cordon. We did take one of those shoots and redirect it as our new leader also tying it to this second cordon. So the second year as we come on up this uh, shoot that we trained to be our new leader we did the same thing. So again we topped it off and it allowed for new shoots to grow. We trained one going out each direction on the cordon and a third one to again be our new leader. So you can see each one of these is a year. The third year we did the same thing. So we didn't get our cordons trained soon enough or tied down and so that's why there was a little bit of an arch. It was sort of hard to bring them down. And we do have some sucker growth here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these back um, because these are not gonna do anything but create a lot of vegetation here. We wanna maintain these growing outward. Now, last year in the gardening world, it got away from us like a lot of things. And so we didn't actually get out here and trim this like we should have to train that new growth. So as we look at this, it's not too far past that we can't still go ahead and, and produce some new sprouts. So we're going to cut this. And when we make this cut, we wanna make sure that we're cutting it above the buds that we're wanting to sprout. So we have a sprout on this, or a, excuse me, a bud on this side that we're gonna hopefully get to grow this direction. This bud will likely, will train onto this cordon. And then this bud will be our new leader. So we're gonna go ahead and trim this off and later on this season we're going to see a lot of these shoots develop and we'll be training those along this cordon. So on our next tree here we have a very similar um, situation. You can see this little defect. This happened because we didn't get out here and tie this one down. The thing about uh, espalier is they require a lot of um, regular checking and training. So because this one didn't get trained and we had to get another sprout it kind of made this elbow here. Now, now that there's no vegetation, you obviously notice it, but once there's some vegetation on here, it's not gonna be as noticeable. What we do notice here and wanna take care of are these water sprouts that have come up from the first cordon branch that we have going across here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those so that they don't distract from our overall form that we're trying to create. Now, Again, something you want to keep in mind as you're doing this is um, whatever structure you're using, you want to make sure to have that trellis in place before you actually plant your plants because it's nice just to have that to grow on. We've used this four cordon wire system, which works really well. Um, and again, there's different styles of espalier you can do. You can do a candelopper, you can do a fence style, you can do this horizontal look that we've done here. But regardless, when you're setting up your trellis, what's nice on these wires is to put in a turnbuckle 
so that you can actually tighten this wire as it might uh, soften in the heat or as it gets more weight on it from the fruit tree. Um, and that allows you to create more tension to really support that tree. So regardless of whichever style you choose, you want to make sure that you're constantly, uh, regularly, I should say, looking at directing that growth of those sprouts, especially as they're still supple. Otherwise, you might have some deformations. Um, we have just used some of this horticultural tape in order to train those and tie them to our cordons and make sure that they stay where they're supposed to be. Um, but in the wintertime, this sort of creates green flags all over your plant. So something that we have found that's a little more discreet are these black kind of rubber band like uh, ties. So you can easily kind of wrap this around and it ties within itself and it will hold that plant and doesn't cause any harm on that bark. So it's a nice little discreet way to tie that cord on to your wire. But espalier is a fun way to try to um, incorporate fruit trees in what might be an unlikely tight space. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.